Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, When Being a Favorite is No Longer a Blessing but a Curse. When Being a Favorite is No Longer a Blessing but a Curse. There are those instructions that God gives men as well as women, siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandmothers, and some of you all know the rest. And those instructions may be given through someone, for instance, at the time of one's passing, a document a family record, something that the deceased left behind. Sometimes the person is not deceased. They are very much alive. But there are these instructions. And sometimes you don't know if the instructions are a blessing or a curse. Especially if you're not walking with the one true God, especially when you don't have a clue about the spiritual side of things, the things that you can't see with your eyes, the things that you can't touch, the things that you can't smell, the things that you can't feel. All I know is I was given some instructions to do something. All I know is that this person left this behind and expected me to. And some of you all can fill in a blank. And usually, people who leave behind instructions, whether once again above ground or after their passing, they usually leave those instructions with those they favor. Now, this doesn't have to be within the family. This could be friends doing this for friends. People are part of the brotherhood, the sisterhood, a prince, a king, a peasant, a slave. But whoever or whatever, what appeared to be a blessing for some individuals, God will say, don't take it, don't receive it. It's a curse. Stay with me. It's a curse. Not only does God curse men, women, but he will give you instruction not to take something from what we thought was a favorite, but rather a cursed individual or group. Stay with me. This is going to be a bumpy ride for the favorite. Not so much for the one who's the black sheep, the scapegoat, because you already knew. God, he allowed you to see some things that the favorite was blinded by all of the shiny objects, couldn't see. Stay with me. In the Bible, it does contain curses. If you don't see anything when you're reading about curses, you haven't read the Bible long enough. You haven't studied the Bible. Curses are in the Bible. Divine judgment, consequences for disobedience are in the Bible. The Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy shows both blessings and curses. And they're all tied to disobeying God's commandments. You do what God tells you to do, blessing. You don't do, cursed. You follow instructions. Don't worry about consequences because you follow the instructions. Don't worry about the devil because I only did what God told me to do. Don't worry about your naysayers, the people who say, God didn't tell you. God wouldn't. I've never heard of such a thing. Doesn't matter. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, oh moral human being. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Because you're going to press forward anyway for those of you all who are standing your ground when it comes to what somebody is supposed to do, supposed to give you, or what you're supposed to carry out. 
and you're doing something that everybody is looking at you crooked at. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. There was disobedience in Eden. I talked about the relationship of Adam and Eve and what we could glean from it. But shall we talk about the disobedience? Oh, but I've heard this time and time again. Oh, this is a little bit, little bit uh, eye opening here because some folks are walking in this right now and hopefully you won't be walking in the curse. There was disobedience in Eden. Adam and Eve, they did what? They ate that fruit, didn't they? And that is found in Genesis chapter 3, 16 through 19. God cursed the serpent. He cursed the woman. He cursed the man. He had pronounced all of these consequences for their disobedience. Can someone look around? Hmm. Take a look at old family history. Can you pay attention to patterns where it just seems like this family is cursed? Every time somebody decides to do something, something happens that causes all sorts of problems. And she is supposed to be the favorite, but yet there's still issues. She touches something and rather than her having a Midas touch, (laughs) instead everything ends up having an argument having an issue dramas and traumas people don't want to talk to each other people are tripping people got attitudes he was the favorite but yet but yet it seems like What was supposed to be a blessing, at least in the beginning, everybody got issues with this stuff that he passed around. Folks want to go up in people's houses and steal. Some folks even lost their lives behind his stuff. I mean, I don't know about this favorite business. I don't want to be a favorite, says someone. Matter of fact, they have worked hard not to be the favorite. Even went so far as to make sure that my name is not out there publicly for anybody to tie me to that individual, Lord Jesus. See, for some of you all, you aren't there yet, but you're headed in that direction because that one who is favoriting you is also that one who is cursed. The one true God showed me in the spirit that you don't want what that one has. No, I don't. No, you don't. The hell that those who are connected and associated with and how they got to look over their shoulder behind what that man left them with is a stress. Why would you not want to connect with this family member and that one? And why wouldn't you want to go here and go there? Because that one got a mark on her back. If she steps to the east or to the west or to the north or to the south there's somebody that's going to follow her there's somebody that wants something from her she's cursed it would have been better just to give everything away it would have been better had the man just said i don't want this any longer Because of all of the arguing and the fussing and the fighting. And besides the man already had. Oh, I'm speaking to a favorite in someone's family. And that man, you think that he's so blessed because all of what he got. No, he's cursed. He says to those who are closest to him. Ever since I received this stuff, it's been nothing but a curse. You got to consider who owned it. You got to consider who was instructed to do some things long before you were instructed to do some things and they chose not to. Some people received other people's goods and they shouldn't have. And then you wonder why you always got some issue in that house of yours. Mm -hmm. You would have been better off if you would have just let people take their gifts back. You see, because when you give 
family members gifts along comes other family members who'll show up and they'll take what was given not knowing what was said about those gifts not understanding what the connection the association the affiliation was to those items and sometimes folks just straight up stole things and so you thought you got something that was just so beautiful unique a family relic of some sort meanwhile that was aunties meanwhile that was the relative who should have received that back and you got the nerve to be having that up in your china closet (laughs) some folks do still have china closets because they have relatives that are 70 plus years old at the time of this recording and some folks have their share of safes and locked filing cabinets and safety deposit boxes at banks and they've got things that are up in attics and in basements and cellars and so on and so forth and they refuse to let go and let God when I spoke to a church in person there's a reason beyond what I said to them in terms of letting go of items Some of them, they need to let go of those items while they're still above ground because those items are going to be much trouble for their offspring once they check out of here. You see, they're holding on to things that they're not supposed to. The blessing or what appeared to be the blessing was when someone thought in their mind it was a blessing Mm -hmm. there's a lot of that too where people think one thing and then God shows them up and says that's not what you think and then they still want to go ahead and tell people lies and this is where they end up having their share of difficulty with the one true God because God told you that what you're thinking is is not so I thought this was a blessing. He already corrected you. He already told you. He already used people around you to tell you that that's not a blessing. That is a curse to let it go. Sometimes they don't come out and say it's blessing or curse. They just simply know that something is different about this thing. And it all feels good and looks good until somebody in the hood wants it. And once it's spoken out in the atmosphere that there is a request made and if God himself put that person up to requesting whatever that item is and that person refuses. Now. Everything goes down with the ship somehow, some way. And people who go in and think that I got the shiny object got nothing but a problem. Because we go to the one true God, we say, Lord, I simply wanted to do the right thing in my asking, in my doing. Some of you all who are favorites, you know. And then it ended up being all this drama and I wish that I never was the favorite. Some of you others who you're not the favorite, but you just simply want something. And the favorite doesn't want to give that to you, wants to make a big spectacle, have an attitude, hold grudges or whatever else. Meanwhile, you know what God told you. God said that you are to ask, right? And you believed that you would receive. And then wait a minute, it didn't happen, Lord. The flood took place or the fire took place or somebody stole and had that person just went on or the group just went on and gave none of those issues would have happened. See, God has a way of destroying everything over one person's disobedience. The curse of Cain in Genesis 4, 11 and 12, God cursed Cain. Why? He murdered. He murdered his brother, Abel. Now, the enemy can put all sorts of things out there in the atmosphere between siblings. Oh, I got to protect myself because I don't know if my sibling going to come after me. Oh, I'm packing, they packing. I don't know. 
God says that they wouldn't be concerned about that sort of thing if they did right. People hide from you. Stay with me. People hide from you when they know that they've wronged you. You see, they can't look you in the face. And when you are that person that's like the collector and you keep calling your brother and you keep calling your sister about something that was supposed to be given to you. I don't know who I'm speaking to. And now you are raging and you're upset about this sort of thing. Please, please, please don't let your anger cause you to sin. Can I remind you to simply put it in God's hands? I've been on this planet long enough to see how God works and I love how he works. Oh, so that's what you want to do. You want to hold a grudge. You want to be judgmental. You want to talk about what I should have, could have, would have done. And all I simply did was ask you a question. Okay. You see, some people like to talk just to talk, to make themselves feel good about what they should do, but they don't. Doesn't matter what comes out of their mouth. God says, I know the heart and man has been corrupt Ever since he was born. Many a man is just like his daddy. If his daddy was a drunk, he's a drunk. Until he turns his life around. Hallelujah. Until he turns his life around. You knew I wasn't going to just leave it right there. Because I know some folks who I didn't end up being like my daddy. <laughs> I didn't want his old pipes and I didn't want his bottles that he emptied out from all that alcohol that he drank and I didn't want his wallet where he stayed broke spending money on women and his friends okay good good for you stay that way <laughs> but something happens though when a person dies suddenly I need this and I need that and I want this and I want that and we got those in the family that unfortunately are hoarders. And sometimes that's genetic. So please pray for me, church. Hoarders. You could have gave, but you didn't. You should have, could have, would have, but you didn't. Walking around, not realizing that the items that you're holding on to that you were supposed to give went from blessing to curse. Oh, there's somebody else I'm speaking to as well. The Israelites in the wilderness in Numbers 14, 20 through 23, God pronounced a curse on the generation of Israelites who doubted and rebelled against him in the wilderness, decreeing that they would not enter the promised land. That's a curse. I don't know who told you that wandering from house to house, sleeping on this couch and that couch is somehow a blessing that to stay in your car is a blessing to be out there, not knowing where you're going to get food, where you're going to get shelter from day to day is somehow a blessing. To be in a relationship where you have to fight every day just for peace to have all sorts of items yes i'm coming right back around to have all sorts of items from this one and that one from my mother's mother's mother and father's 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 that somehow there's no curse involved who are these people what did they do i can hear somebody now you talked about this curse and that goes on what did these people do that is so much drama and trauma associated with these things and, and these wilderness experiences and all of it. They disobeyed. God gave a command, whether it was through a third party or to them directly. And what the command was, was that they were to follow instruction. Whatever that instruction might have been, could have been decades ago. Could have been weeks ago, could have been days or hours ago, and they simply said no, or they ignored God. Oh, yes, people do it all the time. They ignore God. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm too busy. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't know where all this stuff is I'm supposed to get. We'll start digging, start finding it. I told the church in person, in the flesh, go through your attic, go through your basement, get 
that stuff out. Put it up there on the internet so your relatives can be able to download the photographs. And any of those people who were in the church that did not listen would not be surprised if suddenly we got to collect money for so-and-so because their house burnt up. That's how serious that message was. They got so many days. The clock is ticking. The hourglass got turned over the day that I gave that message in person. But you know, God only allows us prophets and prophetesses to save us so much. Because some of it would just scare them. Who is this person coming in here talking about I got to give up my family relics? I mean, is she even a, 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 a person that, that got a degree in this and that? And I mean, how dare a woman come in here and tell me what I'm supposed to do? Oh, yeah. The spirits were <laughs> roaming. Still mad. Because you got to keep walking past that item that God said, you're supposed to give. Lord Jesus. So the Israelites, this generation who was in doubt, who rebelled, wandering in the wilderness. You're not entering into that promised land. You're not entering into the into that space where the desires of your heart reside. The one who disobeys the one true God. Some go, well, yeah, I made it. I did. I finally got into that place where I always wanted to be. But for how long you going to stay there? That's the worst to show up and something appears to be a blessing. Lord Jesus. And you feel good about that thing. And you're like, I made it. And I got all the items around me that helped me through and I got my friends, I got my family and all of that only to find out later that that was the worst decision that you made. Mm, mm, mm. How did it go from a blessing to a curse? Because it was never meant to be. Have you ever heard that? It was never meant to be in the first place. But see, you couldn't see that. Because you were too busy chasing the wind. You were too busy chasing after that man, after that woman. Who, because you were connected to, that's why you weren't able to get what you wanted, how you wanted it, when you wanted it. Because those that were the wise ones told you not to be connected with that person. If you're not connected with that person, then you'll get what I have for you. And some individuals lost land. They lost property and everything else because they did not want to follow God's command. They thought it was just mama and daddy talking. But can I tell you that God can use a mother, can use a father, even when I don't necessarily believe that mama and daddy is with God. But during certain times in our life, God has a way of using them to speak to us. And when I personally, I can tell you my testimony, when I finally let go of the foolishness, God said, I'm going to bless you and bless you all the more. The more the people talked about what I should have, could have, would have done, the more I got blessed. Hallelujah. They made a mistake telling me that I should have been somewhere where God told me that, no, you are not permitted. They made a mistake telling me that I was supposed to take something. That, no, 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 I told you I'm not taking. You see, sometimes people can be agents for Satan and don't even realize it. But then once they do realize it and they continue to do that, now they become an enemy. Not so much an enemy of yours, but an enemy of the one true God. So does that explain why some people are under fire right now? God says that I'm answering some prayers. I'm answering some prayers right now. Why? Why? One particular individual I was speaking to had a lot of questions. Why this and why that? And even when the answers were given, there was still the question of why. The Lord said, stop giving answers because that one refuses to receive the answer. What's going to happen is I'm going to turn the situation around in such a way where she's going to experience the rejection. 
through the rejection of not receiving is where the blessing lies, where I use this individual to give testimony like never before. Can I tell you that through the wilderness experience, through the cursing of the items, the cursing of the people, when a man or a woman finally turns from his or her wicked ways, God can raise you up and use you to testify. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How long will somebody keep chasing after things that God says you are forbidden to have? How long will somebody keep arguing, fussing, fighting, and holding issues over somebody's head because you didn't get the Lord told me he said let it go you already asked let it go you already were in the presence of time and time again you had already helped and helped and helped and helped and helped some more there comes a point where that person has to help themselves and there's so many different ways of doing it nowadays with all of the resources. And you don't have to be the sibling, the auntie, the uncle, the grandmother, the cousin, or whoever else going through the fire over somebody who wants to time and time again reject your request, reject what you're asking, reject what you're saying. You don't have to. God says, I am removing people. Mm, once again, it's another season of that. I'm removing people out of that family circle that's toxic. I'm removing people away from individuals who they thought they thought that you were coming their way. The Lord says, I've given command that you will not because of what was spoken out into the atmosphere. I said, wow, thank you, oh Heavenly Father. See, God was there when man spoke negatively. God was there when woman spoke to man. And told man what he wasn't going to do. What he wasn't going to share. What he wasn't going to give. You see. Because many a woman is working the puppet strings. Uh oh, I'm stepping on somebody's toes. Who's working the puppet strings of a man. She's behind the scenes. There's the puppeteer. Who's the woman? Picture that. And she's got her husband on strings. And some folks are still doing it through legal documents that they left behind and words that were spoken. And just as that one who checked out of here and some folks thought, oh, well, everything is all peaceful and good because that person's no longer around. They left behind all sorts of evil. And that evil has to be cleaned up. I saw in the spiritual realm, and some of you all who are into the paranormal, the occult, you can back me up on this and validate where one particular person within the family, you know, when a minister says, rest in peace, I don't know what type of minister this was, but when he spoke that out in the atmosphere, nothing was done. The spirit of the individual is caught between two worlds. There is a torture of sorts that's going on where there's darkness all around and the spirit still thinks that it is alive. Lord Jesus. And I, I feel sorry for the staff where that person passed away. Because the paranormal activity is heavy. And that's something that no amount of RIP is going to help. Because some individuals, that is the judgment for them until the second judgment shows up. And some folks go, oh, oh, where do I find that? Or let me tell you something. There are some things in this world that thank God for the scientists and the... Uh, individuals who know how to use various tools that can show you evidence of the spiritual realm and how not everything rests in peace. The sounds of those who are tortured and hollering and realizing that they are not sleeping and the families who have had to let go of real estate because it's cursed. Had to let go of land 
because it's cursed. Educated individuals go in to these various atmospheres to find that the energy is off, that something is thumping and bumping in the night, that no matter how many contractors come out to fix things, they break. And not only that, contractors who have been injured and even lost their lives. One particular property that I worked at, a contractor had lost his fingers and then another contractor had been injured. And the land that this property sits on, there is evidence where the foundations of the property are cracking all around, even down to the swimming pool area. And we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of families and they keep putting band-aids on things. You see, that's just one of thousands and thousands of examples all around our world. I can't seem to understand says the developer. I can't seem to understand, says the contractor. It's cursed. I'm a shingase. It's cursed. Let us talk about the favorite who has inherited the curse. The pro or the blessing in being the favorite who I finally got something. Somebody finally thought about me. The blessing was, at least that's what it appeared to be before it turned into a curse. Remember, we're not talking about people who's just riding on blessings and until they end up seeing the one true God. No, we're talking about when the blessing turned into a curse and that one who was considered a favorite oh my goodness this is a problem now uh-huh uh-huh yes it is it started out where it appeared to be a blessing there was all of this attention put on the favorite there was plenty of support there was encouragement that favorite felt important had a sense of self-worth even the self-esteem was uplifted and the phone calls increased and there were people that were coming and going out of the house and is there anything that I can help you out with and all of that good stuff. It appears to be a blessing. Stay with me. That individual who they were given so much and they were even told to share. And at times they struggled with sharing and some didn't even share at all. There were an increase of opportunities and resources, especially those families of wealth, right? Influence, powerful. We're stepping away from the average Joe now and the average Jane, but those of affluence, our sisterhoods, our brotherhoods, the princes and the kings and queens, uh-huh. All sorts of opportunity and resources and I want to work with you and I want to work with you and all types of activities, privileges. Ah, it's a beautiful thing. They look blessed to me. They look blessed to me. Mm -hmm. But what wasn't said? Because all of that has some type of connection association with, excuse me, but, uh, you are the holder of, you're going to have to give that up. There are back taxes on that type of uh, the thing and whatever else, right? Oh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, that was never his. Uh, however, um, there are ways that you could be the owner of that if you, yeah, I, I'm so sorry, but no, he was never, uh, what did he say? A multimillionaire? <laughs> No, I'm sorry. He's going to be penniless before it's all said and done. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. The resentment shows up. Uh-oh, wait a minute. What did I just get myself into? So he gave you, but he didn't give me. Oh, he looked out for her, but didn't look out. Oh, okay. Oh, he, he did that for him. <laughs> 
he never even lifted his finger up and did one doggone thing, but yeah, he gets something. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Folks looking at each other and can't say that they received a check. They received a bank deposit, that their name is on a document, and that they're awaiting some monies. Mm-hmm. Tension in the atmosphere. What does she know? What does he know? Oh, I hope he does. Because you know he going to want something and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. Left behind. Division. Jealousy. Bitterness. Anger. Does that sound like God is in a plan? Does that sound like blessing? <laughs> there were the curses that showed up once again or felt like a curse all these expectations because now that I got this all of this I'm supposed to because I've got to divvy up I've got to change my phone number I got to change my location who's this Hanging out outside my window. Who's this following me? What you want from me? I ain't got what you think I got. You better go head on somewhere. I wasn't stupid enough to get my name put on a bunch of stuff. So that folk could easily look it up. And So I don't know what you're doing. What, what you trying to prove. What you think you're going to get. <laughs> I'm speaking somebody's truth. <laughs> You did the right thing when you said no. They all told you you was crazy. <laughs> you did the right thing. The blessing turned into a curse. I need somebody to help me. I mean, because this is just too much. And I'm expected to do all of these things. Yeah, because the one who was once dependent on you got to grow up and put your big girl pants or your big boy pants on and be resilient you got to demonstrate some independence no nobody's coming and seeing about you and helping you with this that and the other that's why none of us took it that's why none of us wanted it all of that maintenance <laughs> The Lord used one particular relative to explain to me about how she made her property choices. And some of the things that she spoke on was, you don't want a house on a hill. She said, you don't want something that you've got to spend so much money on year after year after year to keep that thing maintained. Because the foundation is weak or because there's old piping or there's old wiring, the real estate value in the area. Take a look at that. What is it nearby? What type of benefits are you going to get? You see. Natural disasters. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to how the weather is and all of the work that comes when the weather is bad. <laughs> and somebody thought that they got something special, something good, something wonderful. <laughs> Lord Jesus, let us take a moment right now to pray. Pray that the Lord continues to open up our eyes and keep us away from what is cursed, Lord Jesus, and to usher us into real blessing, hallelujah, for our obedience in Jesus' mighty name. We ask that those who feel angry, bitter, disappointment, rejected, jealous, all of that, because somebody got, we are asking that you turn all of that into nothing more than positivity turn every situation around turn every emotion around move on that person's spirit to see the freedom and not holding on to the anger the resentment the bitterness the jealousy and all of that 
we pray, Lord Jesus, that that individual will be blessed, blessed by someone who is not family. Lord Jesus, be favored by someone who is not toxic kin in Jesus mighty name. May your angels of protection encamp all around and guard that mind of those individuals who are plotting all sorts of revenge as a result of what they thought was a blessing, which is really nothing more than a curse. I ask you, Lord, to help this individual listening in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace, knowing that you're going to be all right through this trial. You're going to be all right. No matter what. A positive mindset goes a long way. We're not talking about false hope and all of that because a lot of false hope is associated with people making false promises. And that's why there was the fallout to begin with, with some of the individuals in the family, because there was all this promising that went on. There was the exaggerations. There was the lies. There was a lot of ugly. And that is why we don't fall prey into those situations of, of what somebody going to do. And I'm, are you my favorite and all that other stuff? Because the truth of the matter is, is that oftentimes people, as they get older, they get lonely and they'll say just about anything to get some attention for themselves. You see? So, whew, a lot, a lot to think about but you're going to be all right once again because god is on the move feel free to take a look at the description box like subscribe share comment and for those of you all who feel so moved to give as always thank you blessings to you